Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. Welcome to Unity of Jupiter. Great to see some familiar faces. Uh, we have a wonderful Sunday planned for you, Reverend John Denny. Um, you'll notice that the piano bench is empty. Joanne was here, but she is not feeling well, so we are going to uh, work without her and keep her in our prayers. Um, special music today is by Pat McGee. He's a local musician, and uh, we're really looking forward to that. So without further ado, let's all stand up and join together in singing My Soul is Welcome Here. And Larry, if you could put the lyrics up, that would be great. Everybody, please be seated and welcome Reverend John Denny. Ah. I think I'm online here. Thank you, everybody, for coming. So grateful to be here again. Lent is over and on we go. <laughs> Hope everybody had a nice Easter. I missed you last week. So why don't we just take a second, get present, Know that we believe in one power, one presence, God, the good omnipotent. And let's give a deep thought of thanks for being here today, for having the energy, the health, the means to be here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Putting a thought of love out, I love you. Putting a thought of love out to the universe. We know God is love, and this is the most powerful power that we can connect with. And let us realize that we are forgiven. God does not condemn. We are forgiven. We just need to accept that. We say, thank you. I am sorry. Please forgive me. I love you. 
and thank you all for coming. So happy Sunday. Anybody here for the first time today? I know that our musician is, and uh, Stacy brought a friend, so I want to thank you for coming. And um, we have a statement of faith found on the monitor, if you'll join me. God is all there is and present everywhere. This is the force of love and wisdom that underlies all of existence. And then this week's affirmation is the statement of being. This is an incredible statement when you understand the power here. So join me in this one. God is I am. God is I am. The statement of being, which leads us straight to that consciousness, that consciousness of oneness with God. <clears throat> so today I'm going to be talking about the 12 powers of man, one of the foundational unity principles, and I got some fun stories about those. But before we get into that, we'll have our welcome, welcoming song, our, our congregational song, and then we'll have meditation and a nice song. So please join us in our gathering song, and then we will get on with our beautiful prayers. Take a look at the person next to you and say, God, look at the eyes that are not in you. Now feel the love in the sanctuary. Lift your voice and repeat after me. We come together. 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 this church. Let us start today by affirming our unity of Jupiter core value, which is love. Repeat with me, please. We believe love is the harmonizing energy of the divine that binds us all together as one human family. Today's daily word is world peace. And we affirm, I live my vision for a peaceful world. To bring about peace in the world, 
I begin by paying attention to my first reaction when I feel I have been treated unjustly. I do not deny my feelings, but neither do I allow anger, envy, or other negative feelings to take control of my response. I feel my feelings, but I remain committed to the living truth I know. Regardless of behavior, every person is a divine being, a living expression of God. I call upon my divine faculties of love, faith, and strength to guide my next steps. No matter how another responds, I remain centered in God. My efforts make a difference. Peace between individuals creates peace within families, in communities, and among the nations of the world. And in Isaiah 32, 17, the effect of righteousness will be peace, and the result of righteousness, quietness, and trust forever. We have a couple of announcements. Monday evening, there will be a Course in Miracles with Reverend Maureen Cullen at 7 p.m. The first Friday of every month, the Healing Circle with Carolyn Cohen at 7.30 p.m. Wednesday at noon is our midday prayer group led by Pam Shostein and the prayer chaplains. And Sunday morning at 9.30, the Harmony Exercise with Reverend John Denny. So our guest speakers for the upcoming weeks are Reverend John Considine. He'll be speaking on April 23rd. Reverend John Denny will be back here on the 30th. Yay. And on May 7th. Charlie Tweet will be here on May 14th for Mother's Day with a workshop called The Heart of a Course in Miracles. And it will be right here after the service in the afternoon. They have flyers posted in the foyer and around the sanctuary with more information. Reverend John Denny will be back again on the 21st. <laughs> Hank Lewis will be here on the 28th, and some of you may remember him from the burning bowl ceremony. And then don't forget that Reverend Diane Robinson will be back with us on June 11th. <laughs> uh, just to update you on Carolyn's Healing Circle, it was a big success the last time with over three dozen people in attendance. Carolyn has graciously agreed to come back and do it again. So uh, as I mentioned previously, it will be held here in the sanctuary the first Friday of each month at 7.30 p.m. Next one is on May 5th. And now to lead us into meditation, let us all join in singing Surely the Presence. going to do it a cappella today because uh, Joanne's not with us, so let's all join together. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel God's mighty power and God's grace. There's a holy hush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. So I invite you to take a deep breath, close your eyes, and relax the physical body. Starting at the top of the head, relax the face and the back of the head. Relax the neck, the shoulders, arms, hands, fingers and thumbs. Relax the upper back and chest, the lower back and abdomen, Relax the hips, thighs, knees, calves, ankles, feet, and toes. 
And having relaxed the physical body, let us relax our minds. Let the breath take you inside, into your heart center or into the top of the head. We know the kingdom of God is within us. It's here we find the truth that frees from confusion. The perfect love which casts out fear and the peace which passes all understanding. Truth, love, and peace all found right inside of us. We say, thank you, thank you, God. And now, taking a deep breath, remembering we become what we think and what we believe, let us start with the realization of perfect health, our natural condition. Make this personal realization that I am radiant, vital, dynamic health now. Filling ourselves and each other with the color of orange, the thought of perfect health. If we have people in our lives who need prayers of health now, name them, seeing them in perfect health. And now make the realization of perfect harmony, seeing all of your relationships, every piece of your life in perfect harmony, affirming this thought, I am perfect harmony now. Perfect peace, perfect harmony. I am that I am. And let us make the realization of abundant supply, knowing we always have enough and some left over. This is our natural condition. I and my abundance are one. Enough and to spare for every need. And let us see each other as abundance, knowing one person's abundance can never, ever take from another. We have to accept our abundant supply. Now let us build a beautiful thought of gratitude. I am grateful. Think of one small thing to be grateful for. And then let this feeling of gratitude well up inside as we take a moment of silence. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And finally, right action, our personal work. If you have problems or dreams or anything you don't know how to deal with right now, turn it over, placing it into God's hands, letting it happen. We take action knowing all's working out in perfect order, like planting a seed. Let it happen. Now give a deep thought of thanks for spending this time realizing health, harmony, and abundant supply for each and every one of us. God has provided these natural conditions, and we receive them through a deep, profound sense of love, gratitude, and forgiveness. And we ask this all in God's name, and we say, thank you, thank you, God. And now, to finish this time of prayer and meditation, please join me in repeating the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. Now we can enjoy Pat. Thank you, Pat. Hi, everybody. Okay, I'm going to perform a song here. I've written this song. This is called Try and Learn Again. Hope you enjoy it. Trees are green, it's heaven and earth and in between. Get on your feet, it's time to live. Not what you take, it's what you give. When I was young, I thought I knew which way to go. Yes, I know which one is true, which way to go, but you can't tell until you've been, just got to try and learn again. We're all in the same situation, you know, We're right in the river, the life's ebb and flow, so pick up your Dream, rowing your way to know life's just a dream. Sky's blue, trees are green, it's heaven and earth, and in between, get on your feet. It's time to live, not what you take, what you give. So here we go again. So my talk today is the 12 powers of man, which is a sort of a unity classic. If you Google 12 powers, it's purely Charles Fillmore, which really comes up. And uh, the 12 powers of man, we're told the subconscious realm has 12 great centers of action, the 12 presiding egos or identities. 
And these identities, which we're going to learn about today, are all the powers of Christ and things that we can use on our soul's journey. So the Fillmore's believe that each of us receive these powers and we can use these powers for our soul growth. We don't have to, but we can find them a good way to use. So in 2014 or 13, my vision really became to share this work of metaphysics that I'd learned so many years ago. I didn't know how I was going to do it. I certainly didn't know it was going to lead me to here, but I knew what I wanted to do. And one of the things that came up early was in 1986, I purchased 20 years, like 15 years of sermons, and then something called the National Academy of Metaphysics. And the National Academy of Metaphysics was a school by the Cairo Ethesian Church of Faith out in California, which went all the way from first steps of metaphysics all the way to becoming a minister. And there's nothing in my life I own older than these papers. I was just thinking about that yesterday. I'm like, this is by far the oldest things I own. Now, these, these uh, papers go from first steps all the way to becoming a minister. And in 2015, I said, okay, I want to take all these and I want to have them, I want to make some sort of book and print them out. So I, I hired this girl and we, we, um, we put them all in the computer and then I printed them the first time and there was a lady here at church and she's like, John, do you know how many typos there are in this? She goes, yeah, it's unreadable. And I'm like, oh my God, right? So... <laughs> Her name was, she's the sweetest thing. And so I felt like she was my angel, you know, and she came and she went through every one of these and, and, and fixed every spelling error, every punctuation. It was unbelievable, to, the massive amount of work, you know. And so I wanted to do one through eight. And one through eight, I actually had made into these books, which we had on Amazon for a while. And then there were, I also owned nine through 12. And she goes, well, why don't you let me work on those? Now, this is where this really gets crazy. So never had, we hadn't missed one piece of these. So she, she calls me up and she says, John, we're missing page two. Um, we're missing page two, lesson, lesson four, you know, in, in uh, it's actually called um, course number 10, lesson number four. And I started reading it. And before that, so she told me that, and I came to church that Sunday. It was a Sunday, and, and remember the little pamphlets we got? These little pamphlets. This one happens to be a Myr Myrtle Fillmore. I had one of these, which was the 12 Powers of Man. And that Sunday, I, I took it, and I, I got one, and I put it in my pocket. And so I, after, after church, I went down to my office, and I said, let me find this thing. And it says, over the years, we found 12 important factors of man. And then, it gets, then it, the first being faith. The second being strength. And I'm thinking to myself, that's awfully familiar. You know, I feel like I'm having deja vu. And, and suddenly I was like, you got to be kidding me. I reached in my pocket, pull out the 12 powers of man, put it with Dr. Bissell's lesson, and they're all exactly the same except one power was moved in place. And I, I was, you know, it was a second shocking thing because one other time I found him talk about Myrtle Fillmore in one of his, in one of his sermons. So I was like, this is unbelievable. I have the 12 powers of man by Dr. Bissell and the 12 powers of man by Charles Fillmore, almost identical. And, and it was, there's a few things that have happened to me in this church. One of the reasons why I feel so called here is like how I saw the labyrinth taking prosperity plus with Diane, um, <laughs> your, your lesson here, just little things that have happened in this room, which are unexplainable unless we're explaining it in this metaphysical way. So when I felt, and I'm always looking for signs. And you know, a lot of times things will happen to us and it can be three, four weeks, three, four years before you look back and be like, how did I miss that? It was so obvious. That was put right in my, I asked for a sign and there it was. So I started this journey of metaphysics and I was like, well, is it okay for me to put this stuff out there since I didn't write it? And so I said, give me a sign. So one of the first signs, I got a phone call from one of Carol's nephews and, and he took a paddleboard course with me I didn't even know he had any relatives. And um, he told me about these, you know, he, he was the first sign. He told me about these videos and things like that. So I started seeing all the signs and I'm like, okay, I'm connecting the dots. This is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. 
So the 12 powers of man, I started on this journey, and one thing I did not want to do is turn this into a report. Susan Toya is like, my, my talk on Palm Sunday, she's like, nice report, John. I'm like, well, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes when you're studying all this stuff, it can come off as a little report. And let me tell you, the 12 powers of man could be a full-on report because there's a location in the body for each one. There's a month for each one. You know, you could literally do a report. So where did it take me? Well, the first place it took me is the number 12. And I'm like, how come 12? And then... I started to realize, you know, 12 shows up a lot. And so that, this is my first journey was into the number 12. And I like angel numbers. My, my favorite numbers is 444 or 44. And I see those numbers and I just feel a sense of calm. Well, the 12 is also associated with that same sort of feeling. And it's, a, it's the concept of completion or wholeness. And it says, the number 12 is a reminder you have everything you need for a fresh start to go to the next level. So let's take a little journey into 12 for a minute. 12 is a natural number and a highly composite number. So that means it's div divisible by many different numbers. It's the largest number, number with a single syllable. It's the smallest abundant number. Did you even know there was such a thing as an abundant number? <laughs> uh, I didn't either. But I was very happy to see that since abundance I talk about every day. But an abundant number is when, the, when all the, the sum of its divisors are more than it. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 6 is 16, so it's more than 12. So that's, it's the lowest of all the abundant numbers. Jesus had 12 disciples or 12 apostles. Well, which one was it? That was something like Helena. Disciple, apostle. This was the first thing. So Jesus had 12 disciples, but often you see apostles. I'm like, well, did he have both? What's the difference? So a disciple is a follower of Jesus. An apostle is a follower of Jesus who also teaches the same things, who brings forward his message. So I guess I'm trying to be an apostle today. <laughs> Good luck, but anyway. So the distinction is, the disciples learned from Jesus, and the apostles were in charge of continuing Jesus' message. I thought that was kind of cool. Jacob had 12 sons, and there were 12 tribes of Israel. The 12 tribes were started after Moses had led the people out of Israel, metaphysically probably out of the dark and into the light. We have 12 months in the year. There's 12 signs in both the Chinese and the, both zodiacs have 12 signs. And the Chinese zodiac has all the animals. My son is a water rabbit, the gentlest of all the signs. My daughter is a fire ox, <laughs> the most difficult of all the signs. <laughs> when the guy read about fire ox, he didn't even want to read it out loud. He's like, maybe you should read this part. <laughs> we have 12 days of Christmas. Here's one I don't know if anybody knows. It takes 12 years for Jupiter to orbit the sun. And do you know how many moons Jupiter has? 12. Jupiter has 12 moons, and Jupiter takes 12 years to orbit the sun. We have 12 eggs in a dozen. I think this is where I learned a dozen, but it was donuts, not eggs. I was like, a dozen donuts? I was like, this must be heaven. So I figured out what 12 meant pretty quick. We have 12 hours on the clock. We have AM and PM. People know what that means? Ante meridium and post meridium so before and after midday 12 o'clock we call noon and midday and 12 o'clock we call midnight so again we cut our whole day into 12s we graduate in the 12th grade that's the end of high school every dice or cube has 12 edges has six sides but 12 edges there's 12 face cards in a deck and, uh, and, oh, you have to roll 12 strikes for a perfect game. These are all things I was kind of figuring out. You need to be 12 to have your bat mitzvah. You need 13 for a bar mitzvah. Now, is that woke? I think we should talk to the Jewish community. Have this, <laughs> have this one figured out. I mean, that's not fair. So we have 12 inches in a foot, and we have 12 steps of AA, or the 12 steps program, which leads to a spiritual awakening. The Beatles made 12 albums. 
The 12th man in football is the fans or the thing, and Arthur, the king, king Arthur had 12 knights. We have 12 pairs of ribs, and we have 12 cranial nerves in the human body. And 12 people have walked on the moon. Under British law, you can buy an animal when you're 12. I don't know why that matters. <laughs> so anyway, I went on this little journey of 12s, and 12 is that, is that uh, special number. And we're in the 12 powers of man. So let's move on to the 12 powers of man, which are really, it's kind of like the fruit of the spirit. We already have them. They're, they're not something we really have to acquire, but they're something we should be aware of and start to use and develop if we want the things that we want in life. And so Charles Fillmore and Dr. Bissell sort of found these to be the most important things. So the first is faith. And, and they, both, they both had faith for the first one. I have always looked at faith as the connecting link between hoping and knowing the connecting link between hoping and knowing. And then the other great thing reads from Hebrews 11, chapter 1st verse. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. There's something from the seen to the unseen. So Carol said, once you know that you know something, you don't need faith anymore because you already know that you know it. But when we want to know something, we have to have that faith. The, sec the second power is strength. And uh, on the original 12 powers of man, Charles Fillmore said strength, stability, and steadfastness. Dr. Bissell just called it strength. But strength is what we need to stay on course. And, and the things about strength, they talked about physical, mental, and spiritual strength. So we need physical strength. We need these bodies. None of us would be here this morning if we didn't have some physical strength to get here. We said, Mom, my mom's going to be 90 in July, and she drove up here. She's got strength in that body, you know, amazing. In the, in the mental realm, it's the ability to lead, the ability to, to have, enables one to lead, to accomplish, and to follow through on purposes in life. And the highest expression of all is spiritual, our spiritual strength, which unfortunately is pretty rare in the world. Might be pretty common in here, but you know, spiritual strength, most people go along thinking it's the physical, mental world that gets us by, and they don't even tap into this area. The third power is wisdom, and he also called it judgment. Dr. Bissell called it judgment and discrimination. I thought that was funny because when you look at a lot of the lists, it doesn't say judgment or discrimination, it just says wisdom. Because everybody likes to be so nice around here. But I think it's really important, it's the wisdom to know the difference. It's spiritual discernment. If we have a, a, a decision to make, what, do, what kind of filters do we run it through? You know, when do we decide, is it true or is it false? Is it real or is it fake? And there seems to be a real lack of that right now, you know? I, I mean, it's crazy. So wisdom and d discrimination, knowing the difference, the wisdom to know the difference, the highest form of spiritual knowing. Do uh, Charles Fillmore called it quick knowing. Like, what's your heart tell you? You know, right away. Our head takes forever to figure stuff out sometimes, you know? Yes, no, maybe, what, what if that person doesn't like? Our heart doesn't do that, you know? Our higher self, bam, it's yes or no, black or white. It's, it's usually a very quick thing. So Char he called that quick knowing. I mean, you just know something already. You don't have to think about it too much. You already know it. Like, what's your heart telling you? I tell the clients in my, in my uh, practice, What's your heart telling you? You know, what's your head telling you? My head's telling me yes, no, maybe. Your heart is going to be yes or no. So we say, what's your heart telling you? Put your heart into this. All these different things, they're real. The wisdom, the wisdom is the principal thing. This is from King James, Proverbs 4th chapter 7 first. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. The next power in Charles Fillmore's is love. Now, Dr. Bissell, he skipped this one and he put the next one up and he put love at, at, at the end. And 
I don't know, save the best for last, but Charles Fomor has it here in fourth, and he, he says that even the lowliest task or deed is made holy, joyous, and prosperous when it's filled with love. And we know that uh, Mother Teresa said, there's no great things. You don't do any great things. You do lots of small things with great love, and that leads to a great life. It's the law of spirit. If we would have peace and harmony in our environment, we must first establish within ourselves. And Dr. Bissell saved this one for last, so I'll go over it at last, but they say that the disciple of love is John. It's the only, it's the only disciple I'll touch on today. <laughs> you guys can look the rest of them up. Okay, so power number five is power. Power, dominion, and mastery. One power, one presence is what we believe here. So, and, uh, and Dr. Bissell also had power. So one power, one presence. The sixth is imagination. Dr. Bissell called it imagery. It's located in the top of the head. This is, they say that imagination is God within us. This is our creative force. This is Neville Goddard. He says that um, we, we first have to go to imagination before we can go anywhere. But if you think about it, all things are possible. All things are possible to what? My imagination, you know? And our imagination has to be developed in a way where we remove the doubt, we remove the fear. The only thing that stops us that with God all things are possible is our imagination and belief system thinking they're not. So we have to really work on our imagination. The highest and best work of imagination is the marvelous transformation that it works in character. Imagine that you are one with the principle of good and you will become truly good. That's Charles Fillmore. He also said imagination gives a man the ability to project himself through time and space, rise above all limitations. <clears throat> and it says it the third eye. And then one of Patrick and my favorite writers is Neville Goddard. He said, our imagination connects us with the state desired but we must use imagination masterfully, not as an onlooker thinking of the end, but as a partaker thinking from the end. Seeing these things we want as already done. If we do this, our subjective experience will be realized objectively. The, seen, the unseen will become the seen. And this is God within us. Number seven, understanding you must first enter into the understanding that god is omnipresent omnipotent and omniscient it is the source and that you can draw upon this source without limit this is what unity teaches us over and over that god is within us dr Russell also pointed out that again understanding is located up in the front of the brain the eighth power is will and will is the man. So man is mind, but the will is the man. This is something I found funny because when I was reading Charles Fillmore's 12 Powers of Man and Dr. Bissell's National Academy of Metaphysics on will, neither, both of them said, someone said this or who said this has been lost in antiquity. So and when I first read it, I was like, oh, did he say the other guy said it? But um, so the will is man. What gets us out of bed in the morning? You know, what is this will? The will is undoubtedly the focal point around which all action centers. When there is harmony of mind, it's our will that really gets us up and out of bed. Order. The ninth power is order. So my wife and I, we're not dirty, right? But we are not orderly. Our house is very lived in. There is not a surface in the house which doesn't have something on it. And so I walked around the house thinking about order the other day, and I was like, okay, well, how can I help this out a little bit? And I just look at a table. I'm like, that doesn't belong there. In the order of this house, that roll of tape does not belong on my desk or that screwdriver or whatever it might be. So I started just taking one thing at a time, putting it back where it goes, and you just watch this sense of order start to take over the house. And 
also being able to order our thoughts correctly. You know, seek first the kingdom of God. Think good thoughts. You know, we need to actually make an effort there. So we increase whatever we praise. The whole creation responds to order. Order, we are the center of our universes. Each of us is the center of our own universe. And Dr. Bissell said, heaven, order is heaven's first law. The first law. It had to be order because God did not create chaos. So he must have created order. How about zeal? Zeal is our 10th one. So this is one, when I first heard the word zeal, I just thought it was enthusiasm, right? Well, if we remember Diane's favorite saying of Charles Fillmore, she said it all the time. I fairly sizzle with zeal, energy, and enthusiasm eager to do that which ought to be done by me today. Well, zeal, energy, enthusiasm, so I guess it doesn't mean energy and it doesn't mean enthusiasm, or they wouldn't be in the same sentence. So this is another one I had to look up. But uh, zeal is, is, and this is the, ener- is, is, is the definition, has energy and enthusiasm in it, but it's great energy and enthusiasm in pursuit of a specific cause or objective. It's like the zeal to do something. You know, I, it's like, I don't know why, but I have zeal. I have zeal for the harmony exercise. I have zeal to come here and share this stuff. I have zeal to study it. Someone said to me last week, why don't you just go on the new AI thing and say, write me a sermon? I was like, what? I was like, as if we don't think, as we, you know, we don't think anyway. Well, how about that one? You know, the whole fun of getting up here is the study I did last week and try to make it make sense to everybody else. You know, I... I that's a dangerous concept, you know, AI. So Diane's favorite saying, zeal. And, the, and, the, and it, so this is the compass. Zeal is the compass that helps steer the ships of life. Number 11 is renunciate. Charles Fillmore called it renunciation and release. And Dr. Bissell called it elimination. But you see them on the charts. They come in about the same way. And this is, again, a mental, physical, and emotional thing. Apparently, it it comes from the stomach. So anybody who's ever suffered from physical physical constipation, miserable, right? Well, mental constipation is even worse when we're sitting around here believing a set of belief systems, navigating our life through a false set of belief systems. You want to talk about constipation. So that needs to be unlearned. And we need, to, we need to mentally, emotionally unlearn that stuff. So false beliefs, and how do we do it? Forgiveness. Accepting these higher principles, rising ourselves up. So this 12th power of man, according to Charles Fillmore, is life. Life conservation. It's the most power. And, and, uh, and I guess life is this energy we have that keeps us going. And Dr. Bissell had put this, the life conservation, I guess it was in number 11 for him, but uh, I moved him around. But he said, <coughs> um, life. Yeah, life, life is that unexplainable thing that keeps us going. And Dr. Bissell, like I said, he put love last. And I believe that he put love last because God is love, and love is sort of the most important and powerful thing we can learn to use. But to find the 12 powers of man, and the 12 powers of man, again, in the National Academy of Metaphysics, and have it all these ahas going off right here in this building, you know, it's just, it's hard to explain, and it's hard to, you know, really put it in any physical thing, you know? So the calling is much higher than that. It's like, I don't even understand it, really. So love is the beginning and the end. I love you. Probably the most powerful words we can say to each other, provided the other person is saying it back to us. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but God's love, it, we don't even need to return it. It's just, it, he just gives it to us straight out. So. Anyway, that's my talk on the 12 powers of man today and the number 12. So why don't we just take a moment and pray. Taking a deep breath 
and thanking, giving a deep thought of thanks for these 12 ideas, for these 12 concepts, for faith and strength, love, wisdom, all the different ones we learned about today, bringing them into our lives, because when we have all of these 12, 12 balanced, our lives are in order. And we say, thank you, thank you, God. Amen. And now we can enjoy, oh, now our offering. So after our offering, we'll have a song also. I want to thank everyone for coming today. I really appreciate it. And if you want to learn more about the specifics, talk to Susan Toya. She'll tell you where to do the research. That's right. I love me. I am love. Thank you. Now let us move into our celebration of abundance, our opportunity to give back from our financial abundance. Let's begin by reading the unity of Jupiter prosperity blessing together. In a universe flowing with good, we acknowledge God as the source of all our blessings. We affirm our receptivity and acceptance to every action, known and unknown, expected and unexpected. To us now, thank you, God, and so it is. There are many ways you can give. Can drop it in the baskets going around. You can also text your donation to 561-581-1119 or give by credit or debit card in the office after this, today's service. Most of these options can be set up for automatic giving. To keep our time of giving sacred, I would like you to take your gift in your hands and bless it. You are planting the seeds of your own prosperity and giving back to God from the abundance that has already been provided for you. Read life into your gift and thank God that you have this gift to give. Now affirm with me the offertory blessing. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give, and all that I receive. And all that I receive. Okay, uh, that's beautiful. Uh, I'm going to do another original song. Uh, this song is called Love Is. I hope you like it. What you get. Sorry. Bigger they are, harder they fall. Take what you get. Want nothing at all. Sun and the moon, stars in the sky, spinning through space, and no one knows why. Walk in the rain, live for today, make up your life like it's made out of clay, like writing a book or making a song, you get to say how things go along, love is what you want.
shine lit from within don't worry about time just that you begin smile on your face spring in your walk song on your lips delight when you talk follow your path get on your way open your mouth you got something to say the ocean is deep heaven is high dare to believe make your dreams fly love is what you want Pat. Glad Stephen Rosemary came to see you. Well, again, just a deep thought of gratitude for everyone coming today. We really appreciate it. And now, if we have any uh, prayer chaplains and if we could bring the gifts forward. Our prayer chaplains have been specially trained. If anybody would like to pray, they're always available. And now just take a moment of silence, take a deep breath, and give a deep thought of gratitude for this abundant supply. And we say thank you for this expression of abundance, knowing we always have enough and some left over for our every need. We never have to be in fear, never worry, never lack. We have enough and to spare for every need that is God's law of supply, and we say thank you, thank you, thank you. And then let us say a special thought of prayers for all the prayers in this prayer box. Whatever they may be, we just turn it over to God, the one power, one presence, knowing that he knows what needs to be done. And we say thank you, God. And now, if you stand, join hands, we sing the peace song followed by the prayer for protection. <laughs> 